Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 30th of September. Floods due to heavy rainfall wrecks a walk in eastern and northern India. Afghan presidential election sees big drop in voter turnout. And Sri Lanka's former army chief enters presidential race. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday urged students in southern Chennai city to find easy solutions to the problems being faced by the country. He said that India would like to offer its solutions to the entire globe and especially the poorest of the nations. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday urged students to find easy solutions to the problems being faced by the country and said that India would like to offer its solutions to the entire globe and especially poorest of the nations. Prime Minister Modi, who arrived in southern Chennai city while speaking at the India-Singapore hackathon at the Indian Institute of Technology or IIT Madras said, from schools to higher education and research, an ecosystem was being created that it becomes a medium for innovation even as the country was one among the top three startup ecosystems. We are encouraging innovation and incubation for two big reasons. One is we want easy solution to solve India's problems to make life easier. And another, we in India want to find solutions for the whole of the world. Later addressing the 56th convocation of the IIT Madras, the Prime Minister said that graduating students were passing out at a time when the world is looking at India as a land of unique opportunities. He said optimism about New India was the common thread that emerged during the high-profile meetings during his U.S. tour last week and noted that Indian community has made a mark for itself globally in science and technology. Floods triggered by torrential rains have inundated houses, swamped roads and paralyzed normal life in India's northern Uttar Pradesh and eastern Bihar provinces. More than 100 people have died due to rain-related incidents in both the provinces. Heavy rains in several parts of India's eastern Bihar since Friday have thrown normal life out of gear, affecting road, rail, healthcare facilities and schools. Several people in Bihar's capital Patna were rendered homeless by the floods as water inundated their homes and forced them to wade through waist-deep water. The death toll from the latest bout of rain reached 20 on Monday. Disaster management authorities have been deployed to coordinate with relief and rescue operations across the flood-affected areas. Authorities have also deployed boats to rescue residents. And the bigger impact of the rains have happened in Patna and uh, nearby areas, especially the Patna city, uh, because of the water logging. And right now, as we speak, the low-lying areas like Kankad Bag, the Hanuman Nagar, Patrakar Nagar, Rajendra Nagar areas are uh, flooded with uh, water which, are, which is uh, uh, somewhere three feet deep, somewhere even up to five feet deep. In northern Uttar Pradesh province, moderate to heavy rainfall for the last several days at various places has caused great loss of life and property. More than 90% have lost their lives in rain and rain-related incidents in the last few days. While relief and rescue operations are underway, Weather Department has warned heavy rain at isolated places in eastern Uttar Pradesh and rains with thunder showers at some places in the western part of the province. Pakistan resorted to yet another ceasefire violation along the border in Punj district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Sunday, injuring at least six people. There have been over 2,000 incidents of ceasefire violations by Pakistan this year, according to the Indian Foreign Ministry. At least six civilians, including a 12-year-old boy, were injured in Poonch district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir region after Pakistan violated ceasefire along the border on Sunday. 
Pakistani troops reportedly resorted to unprovoked firing in Balakot sector and Mender subdivision in Poonch, targeting residential areas, to which the Indian Army also retaliated. The injured were referred to a government medical college and associated hospital in Rajuri district for treatment. morning, the cross-water firing was injured, and some people were injured. There were two patients who were injured, and they were here. They were here a little while ago, SDM Mender, so they said that we had four people who were referred to, total six people. Earlier on Saturday, Pakistan had violated ceasefire in Shahpur and Kirni sectors in Pooch district. Relations between Islamabad and New Delhi, already hostile, have been further strained over India's decision last month to revoke the special status of Jammu and Kashmir. Moving on, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan raised the Kashmir issue in his speech at the United Nations last week and also admitted his country was involved in training jihadists during the 1980s. Baloch leader Mehran Murray lashed out at Khan, calling his speech insincere over the matter. Baloch leader Mehran Murray slammed Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan over his recent admittance of the country having had cultivated radical factions in the 1980s, while also training jihadis and sustaining contacts with them. Pakistani Prime Minister Khan, while delivering his maiden speech at the 74th UN General Debate on September 27, spoke about India and Kashmir drumming up the hysteria over nuclear war. Murray said that by making such admittance, Imran Khan had shown the world that he was insincere over this matter and is also focused on changing the image of his country at global level. It's the first time that the Pakistani Public Prime Minister uh, accepted on an international forum like the Security Council that it uh, harbored and trained terrorists uh, in the 80s and 90s and uh, now it is sorry for doing what it did and it apologizes. Uh, I think uh, everyone can see through that statement. They're just saying this uh, to get the funds from the US in their begging bowl. Murray deemed Khan's speech as another field attempt by the country to drum up global support over the Kashmir issue. It is funny to see the Pakistani military and its operatives uh, so anxious uh, about the Kashmir issue that they, they're operating like an NGO running across the planet uh, trying to lobby countries and obviously countries are ignoring them to talk about the Kashmir issue. Earlier, India also responded to Khan's speech and said that Pakistan Prime Minister's threat of unleashing nuclear devastation qualifies as brinksmanship, not statesmanship. First Secretary in India's permanent mission to the UN, Vidisha Metra, said that India's citizens do not need anyone else to speak on their behalf and least of all those who have built an industry of terrorism from the ideology of hate. In news from Afghanistan, voter disinterest in Taliban threats dampened the turnout in the Afghan presidential election, which was held on Saturday. According to the officials, only around 20% of the registered voters participated in the election. Around 20% of registered voters, that is just over 2 million people, participated in the presidential poll held on Saturday in Afghanistan, an official said on Sunday. Previous elections in the country have been marred by dozens of deaths and violence, allegations of voter fraud and accusations that the election commission was not independent issues that hung over Saturday's vote. In what is seen as a test of the Western-backed government's ability to protect democracy against Taliban attempts to derail it, those who did emerge from the voting booth said they want their choices to be respected. <laughs> Taliban fighters attacked several polling stations across the country, but tight security prevented any large-scale violence. Technical shortcomings such as missing voter names and biometric devices not working were also reported. Preliminary results of the poll are not expected until October 19th. In news from Sri Lanka, former Army Chief of Sri Lanka Mahesh Thinanayake has joined the presidential race, pledging legal reform and a new political culture for the country. The presidential election in the island nation is slated to be held on November 16th.
Sri Lanka's former army chief General Mahesh Senanayake on Sunday joined the presidential race after being named candidate of the National People's Movement or NPM. Senanayake's presidential bid was announced at a rally in Colombo by the NPM. Speaking on the occasion, the former army commander pledged to bring in a legal reform and a new political culture for the country. Sena Naike became the 22nd commander of the Sri Lankan army in June 2017 and retired last month after nearly 38 years of service. He will face ruling United National Party's this candidate, Housing United. Minister Sajid Premadasa and Anura Kumara Disanaike from the Marxist JVP in the election. Former Defence Secretary Gotabaya Rajapaksa, who has been named as the presidential candidate by Sri Lanka People's Party, is also in the fray. Devotees in Nepal marked the beginning of 15-day-long Baradishan festival on Sunday that commemorates victory of Hindu gods over wicked demons and majorly involves worship of Hindu goddess Durga for nine days. Hindus in Nepal celebrated the beginning of 15-day-long festival of Baradashin on Sunday. People performed guard sthapna ritual, which marks the beginning of the shin and involves placing of a pot at sacred places in homes and temples. The pot on the occasion is filled with holy water and is sown with barley seed. The germination ceremony of seedling known as Jamara was also held in famous Hanuman Dokha de Shain Ghar in capital Kathmandu, a room where special prayers are performed by priests on the occasion. Ramchandra Bhagavan le no din shama Devi Bhagwati Durga Mata ko chay aradhana garera, shakti pradan garera, vijaya dabshim ko dina Ramar Sangha yudha garera, Ramar lai chay harai pachi, desko upar lachhe ma hamle vijaya dabshmi banao chau. The Shain commemorates victory of Hindu gods over wicked demons and is celebrated with great rejoice, majorly involving worship of Hindu goddess Durga for nine days. On the tenth day, elders give barley shoots and apply tikka, a sacred vermilion mark on the forehead of younger members in the family, and bless them for peace, progress and prosperity in life. Agriculture sector plays a vital role in generating income and livelihood for the people of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir. Farmers in the valley are rejoicing over harvesting paddy crop as weather conditions and new varieties of seeds have resulted in bumper production this year. Farmers in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir are rejoicing over harvesting a bumper paddy crop as weather conditions were conducive and quality of seeds were improved. Farmers said the rain this year were adequate and the quality of the paddy has been extremely good. Moreover, there has not been any outbreak of diseases affecting the crops this year, further enhancing the production. The Agriculture Department gave credit to the introduction of new high-yield varieties of paddy and said the pleasant weather conditions resulted in a bumper crop. This year, the shali has a good crop. In the past year, the year has been a good crop. The year has been a good crop. In July, it has been a good crop. But we have also been able to use the water from the water. In our farm, the year has been a good crop. पिछले साल से भी इस साल अच्छा फसल बना है। जो बेंचमार्क हमारी 67.5 क्विंटल्स पर हेक्टेयर लास्ट ईयर की हुई थी, जो इंक्रीज की ट्रेंड में हम रजिस्टर कर रहे हैं, वो इस साल भी ऑलमोस्ट 70 क्विंटल्स और 75 क्विंटल्स के बीच में होने का, आई मीन एस्टीमेट्स लगाए हुए हैं। The harvesting season of paddy starts from the end of September in Jammu and Kashmir every year. Agriculture provides livelihood to a large population of the valley, particularly in the rural areas where farming is the only source of income for many. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Floods due to heavy rainfall wrecks havoc in eastern and northern India. Afghan presidential election sees big drop in voter turnout. And Sri Lanka's former army chief enters presidential race. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash and follow us on Twitter at SouthAsianewsline. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.